And if the author gets bored of writing them, how am I supposed to be entertained by reading it? Welcome to a new video. My name is Daniela and if you're new here, hello. And if you're a subscriber, hi. First of all, thank you so much for 100 subscribers. I'm like in shock and I'm glad for every single one of you. So thank you very much. Um, it's, it's really amazing. But in today's video, I want to talk about the August wrap up, all the books I read in August. And August was my best month ever, not just this year, ever. I read 14 books, which is insane. Frankly, I don't know how I did it, but I read 14 books, so let's talk about them. So the first five books I read are part of the Penguin Modern collection, and I talk about these in depth in my little series, Penguin Modern Quest, Journey Through the Box. That's the name because I can never remember it properly. Um, these I talk about in the second episode, so if you want, check it out. I will link it somewhere here um but let me tell you just the names because if i start talking about every single one in detail it will take a while so the first one is anais nin the veiled woman and this one i gave five stars then we have uh george orwell notes on nationalism this one i gave 4.25 out of five stars then we have gertrude stein food I absolutely hated this. I gave one out of five because it just, it was gibberish for me. So no. The next book I uh, read was Stanislaw Lem, The Three Electronites. I gave this one 3.5 out of five stars. It was, um, it's a collection of four and I really enjoyed the first two. The second two were like, mm, they're fine, but I, I preferred the first two. And the last one from the collection was Patrick Cavanaugh with The Great Hunger. And this one I gave two uh, out of five stars and it's a bit ironic, but like The Great Hunger is the uh, title of the main poem of the thing and I think it's the one I, I dislike the most. So, um, but the others are all right. It's not, they're like, they're fine. It's very difficult with poems to just like everything. So um, these were the first five books that I read. And again, if you want an in-depth description, check out the other video, but let's go to the next book. After that, I read a book I started a while back, but I kept postponing it. When did I start it? I started it in July, so not that far, but this is Poems 1953-1988 by Anthony Twait, um, as you can see, and it's just a collection of poems from all of his works, and <sighs> I struggle to find poems I truly, truly enjoyed. That's the thing about poems. It's it's so difficult to find ones that are good. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. It's just, I did not like it. I gave this 1.5 out of 5 stars. It was just, it, they didn't even feel like poems. It just felt like uh, paragraphs of words and that's it. I was like, God, it, it, at some point towards the beginning, it feels like the author's personal diary, but which I thought was quite cool. But after that, the kind of spirals everywhere. And I'm like, okay, but it was something new. So I'm glad I read it, but I would not recommend, at least from my own perspective. But this was poems. <laughs> The next book I read was Wilbur Smith, The Seventh Scroll. Now this is the mystery book of July that I didn't manage to finish because first of all, it's a giant book. And second of all, it's quite boring. Um, <laughs> I thought it would be so interesting, but it just felt like there was missing an editor. I feel like, I don't know when the author wrote his book, but Wilbur Smith has a ton of books, like a ton of them. And I just feel like he just disregarded having an editor for this one. Um, I didn't check. I'm sure there is some kind of editor on this, but this book could have been cut in half. There are some characters that are introduced that just nobody cares about and some plot points that just aren't important, but he keeps talking on and on. And 
this feels like it was written by a man who hates women because every single woman in this book is terrible. It's like she either lacks character or she's like promiscuous or everything that's bad. They He put it in the women character. Um, the main character of, what was his name? Nicholas was the only likable character that you really like. Uh, there's also another main character, like the main main character is a woman called Royan. Hated her. Um, I Even the end, it just feels so rushed. I didn't tell you what this is about. This is basically about... Royan is working on a scroll by an ancient... Um, scribe and it basically tells you the um it's a map towards a hidden tome um and her husband is killed that's not a spoiler that's like the first five pages um so she asked nicholas for help nicholas is like this rich guy because of course he is um and they kind of go to egypt together but it's all this plot and all this there's murder and there's crime and it's a bit of a thriller and it's just as a concept, it's interesting. As an execution, it's lacking. So, I'm glad I read it. Never again. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars and I will never read it again. Also, I bought this from a secondhand bookstore. I like all my mystery books. And it's just, look at this. Do you see this? It's a mess. It's like holding a manuscript, which is this is not, but it's a mess. Look at this. Awful, but... I'm re I read it, I'm never picking it up again. So that was the July mystery book. And after that, I read and finished reading the August mystery book. This is The Eighth Day by John Case, by the way, for those who are new. Um, for me, the mystery books are like 12 books I wrapped at the beginning of the year. And the key is that the title of each book corresponds to the month. So like August is the eighth month. So this is the eighth day the number eight is in the title um so this was the eighth day by john case um again this is a thriller this is about danny cray who is a struggling artist and a part-time investigator and he's asked to um investigate some people for a really rich person but not everything is like it seems and he has to kind of like find a way out and just unravel the mystery if you will um and this is a very long book it's like 500 pages but i flew through it like i read it so fast i loved it so much and i gave it a five star again the ending is kind of lacking a little bit but i did have fun reading it and my ratings are purely based on vibes it doesn't matter if it's a literary work or not. It's just, did I like reading it? Then it's getting five stars. If I didn't, it, I don't care. It's just, this one was a really good one. I found the main character really likable. He does screw up towards the middle of the book and I started disliking them, uh, disliking him then, but then he kind of redeemed himself. I still didn't like the end that much, but I did have a lot of fun reading it, so five stars. Next, I read one of the books from my um, books I want to finish. So basically books I started ages ago that um, I wanted to finish reading them, obviously. And this one was James Joyce, a portrait of a artist as a young man. And I hated this again. It's just, it was so bad. I gave this one star. It's just, I, I disliked it so much. The beginning makes absolutely no sense. And then when it starts making sense, it's just not the nice kind. It's basically like um, autobiographical in tone. He t tells the tale of Stephen Dedalus, uh, his journey to adulthood. And I looked it up online and apparently this was supposed to have like 65 chapters or something, but the author got bored after like 25. I don't even remember how many chapters this has, but the author got bored of writing these. And if the author gets bored of writing them, how am I supposed to be entertained by reading it? It's just so bad. I hated it so much. Um, there's also, um, the main character goes to a Christian school and while he's like very young, one of the priests beats him up for something he didn't do. And I was like, what? 
but anyway and then towards the end there's a big chunk that just talks about religion and i'm not a religious person so again it wasn't for me um so overall not my cup of tea the writing felt a bit pretentious and by a bit i mean a lot um and i just i it's not a book i would ever read again no this is no after that i read another book that i absolutely loved this is the third volume of heaven's official blessings by moksyang tongsu and translated by suika though all the names in here are very much um pseudonyms because that's what they are um this is basically a danmei a um men love story um and the art is absolutely stunning do you see that it's so beautiful and uh this book uh talks again all the books talk about the main characters but this one goes into the past of xie liang one of the main characters i'm definitely not pronouncing that right um but you get more insight into his past and his friends well subordinates past um and then um towards the middle um it it's like this book is separated into arc and the second book was from arc one to two and then the third one again starts the third arc and we you go back in the present um and it's just i love the two main characters so much they're just so lovable there are so many characters at one point you're like wait who is this one um but i like how all, every single one of them is written this is by no means a literary piece of art but it's so enjoyable and i'm having such a good time reading this that i'm just like so excited to read the next ones uh this is the last one that i actually have so i will have to purchase the next one in the series um again this is the third volume and i love the main characters so much i just love them so much um also if you read it the water scene that's on the cover i was so excited okay i was just that's all i'm gonna tell you so read the books but like read the first and the second first obviously um but yeah this was heaven's official blessing and this is a five stars like 100 percent next i read um i who have never known men by jacqueline hartman and this is translated by ross schwartz as you can see this is such a stunning cover like i love this cover so much so this book is about 40 women that are imprisoned in a underground and no one knows how they got imprisoned or why they got imprisoned um every day uh guards come in to give them like food um and everything they need um and this goes on for years and they have like i don't know how to say this it's like at certain times the light goes off and then it comes back on again they're expected to sleep um they are not allowed to touch they're not allowed to kill themselves because some of them tried and when they did that they would get whipped by the guards and at one point they just get too scared of getting whipped and the main character is a girl who was too young to remember the um world like the outside world when she was imprisoned um so she keeps trying to ask the others how how it was but no one wants to tell her anything um and i don't know how to describe this book without spoiling everything because from the middle of the like the book is split into three parts three main parts and like the description of the book is the first part but then you have the second and the third and it's just such a brilliant book i was hooked by it i was holding my breath every time i read it it's so underlined you can't see it but i, I underlined it so much and i just i think the best word to describe this book is eerie because you never know what's gonna happen and the emotions of these women and the main character she doesn't have a name she never gets a name and i feel like that is so again eerie but 
this is a five star definitely recommend to everyone it's also not that long so the way the author was able to capture so much plot and emotion and character development in so little i was just baffled but definitely recommend one of my favorite books genuinely love this after that i read another five stars um this is sunny days and sea breezes by carol matthews this is very much like a hallmark movie that's the exact vibe you get from this it's about this um what's her name judy jody it's about jody who moves from london to the isle of wright to her brother's boat house thing um because she had like a dispute with her husband um and there she meets this guy what's his name I swear I love this book. She meets Ned and it's kind of about Judy's rediscovery in a way. Um, but it's just, again, not a literary masterpiece, but it, this was such a feel good book. I love Hallmark movies. So this was definitely up my alley. Um, the main characters were both really likable um, and the end was a bit rushed like 100%, but I still, again, vibe only, you know? It doesn't have to be fantastic writing, it's just, I really like this book and it did win some award, I don't remember which, but I see why because I had a blast reading this and I'm glad I managed to finish reading it in August because this is very much like a summer book, if you will, even though the action starts in like, March and then kind of moves to the summer, but I genuinely love this book So if you're into romance and things like that, I definitely recommend after that um, I surprised myself by finishing reading the summer days uh, book because I thought that's the last book of the August, but it wasn't and Then I read Silky by Leo Rostin. Can you see that? Um, again <laughs> Another five stars. I am on a roll this month. It's just so exciting. Um, this is a thriller. This is very much in, um, inspired by um, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, it's about Silky Pincus, who's an ex-cop um, and he now has a private investigation office and he gets this case. Um, but the case is interesting in itself. What I love the most was the main character. He's so funny, he's witty. There are a lot of Jewish words uh, like maven, choose pa, uh, but you do, you do get a glossary with all the words at the end that they use, so it's completely fine. Um, but it's just the main character is so charming and lovable and he's so, so funny. Um, so I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed this. I read it so fast. Um, but I'm glad I did because I had a blast reading this. I obviously love thrillers, so that definitely helped, but um, I do recommend checking this out. Um, it's just, I really liked it. I really, really liked it. So another five star. This was Silky. And the last book of August, which is not really a book per se. Um, it's more like an art book. This is the Russian Museum Paintings. Can you see that? Uh, again, it's one of those books I bought from a secondhand bookstore and I had no idea what it was about, but um, at the beginning of the book, it gives you an in-depth of uh, the Russian museum, as you can see, and just kind of like the pieces of art kind of takes you through time and what changed and how the revolution impacted it and everything like that. But after that, you go through the actual paintings and they are so beautiful. I would call this a, um, like a coffee book, like a, yeah, that's what I would call it. Towards the end, you get more like impressionism and things like that, which I don't particularly like, but there were some that I really enjoyed, like this one, The Mayor's Marriage Proposal by Pavel uh, Fedotov. Do you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but it's, I love this. There's something about the woman's dress and everything that's just so beautiful. And to think that this is a painting is insane. But um, I really enjoyed 
just flipping through this it was so beautiful and again it's not really a book in the sense that I didn't really have that much to read but it it is an art book so I guess it counts but this was the last thing I read this month so this is it <laughs> Do you see this? It's ridiculous. There's so many books, I hope they don't fall, but this is everything I read in the month of August, which is frankly insane. Like, look at this. Do you see this? I have never read this much, ever. Let me read you the August statistics that I have written down. So in August, I read 14 books. The best one was uh, I Who Have Never Known Men. The worst was uh, Food by Gershon Stein. I read a total of 2,953 pages, which again, crazy. I was so close to 3,000, but I, I didn't want to push it, you know? <laughs> um, the majority that I read was um, fiction and 21% is nonfiction. I read quite diverse, like uh, most of the books were under 300 pages, but there are books that were uh, between 300 and 499 and I also have books over 500 so I read a lot and I had an average of 3.41 stars from all the books and this is great I don't know why but I felt like it would be so much higher because I read so many books that I gave five stars I read six books that had five stars which is crazy but I guess I read a lot of books I did not like so um, that kind of compensated for it but still I'm I really enjoyed this month I read a ton but I also really liked what I read so that is very important for me because that's what I'm doing this because I enjoy reading and it just motivates me to see all the statistics and like to put it down in my little reading journal um so yeah this was the month of August Please tell me if you read any of these books and what you thought about them. Like, did you like them? Did you dislike them? Tell me all about them, please, because they're giving this a like. Again, thank you so much for 100 subscribers. I am so, so grateful to every single one of you. And please consider subscribing if you haven't already, because I promise all the videos are really nice. At least I try to make them. So that was it. And I will see you next time. Bye bye. I just give the earth my soul Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls